Well, Chairperson, thank you very much for this introduction. Uh, talking about when antibiotics fail. I'm, I'm sure that today's uh, scenario is uh, the fact that infections are so common in children. And I'm sure every, every child that you see has probably a high chance of being infected. Which means that our antibiotics need to be prescribed without the diagnosis, <clears throat> just because one is afraid of infection. Just uh, 10 minutes ago, somebody asked me about the case, he, and he said that the child came with fever, and uh, he gave an antibiotic. He examined him carefully. After two, three days on a follow-up, there were no localizing sign. But sir, on day four, he suddenly came with severe breathlessness, went into respiratory failure, and died. He said, where did I go wrong? Uh, did antibiotic fail? I said, no, you failed. Uh, because you started antibiotic without a diagnosis, you allowed the serious disease to hide under your cover of an antibiotic which was not adequate, and then you suddenly saw a child almost gasping and dying, and you thought in spite of an antibiotic started on day one, the child died. I think this is nothing uncommon. And I think uh, we have a fear of infection. Uh, why should we be afraid of infection? I think the human being has been endowed upon by wisdom that can take care of any enemies. Uh, today, the United States is a powerful, and I'm sure even there, the infection is everybody afraid of. Uh, with this uh, fear makes uh, you give an antibiotic, then you change the antibiotic, because there is another fear of a drug resistance. So the first antibiotic prescription is for a fear of infection, the second one for a fear of drug resistance. This leads to a multiple antibiotics, and I think uh, this is probably the cause of failure. And I will elude on that, how, how, what all problems it causes. It really makes the further diagnosis difficult. You have a delayed recovery uh, with increased morbidity, and the example that I gave you, a risk of even mortality. Why all this? Because we started in a hurry with a fear of infection and antibiotic. And, and we thought that the antibiotics fail. So the question is, do antibiotics fail? <clears throat> I, I remember in one of the meetings with principals of schools... Excuse me, sir. sir what, just one sec. Uh, we have made a special arrangement to relay this lecture outside because of the overcrowded hall. Kindly note it is being seen on the video and you can hear the lecture just outside the hall also. Sorry, sir. Uh, I remember one of the principal addressing the meeting and said, <coughs> he said, that when the teacher speaks, do the students learn? I was most astonished. I said, what do you want to say? He said, when the teacher speaks, no student learns. And when students speak, they learn. I think uh, the message was very clear uh, that antibiotics similarly, do they fail really? When patient does not improve as expected, we say antibiotic has failed. We blame the antibiotic. I'm sure antibiotic rarely fails in office practice. We are talking about office practice. Surely when you have a nosocomial infection in an ICU setting with a lot of intervention, there is no doubt that antibiotics would fail and probably everything would fail, <coughs> not only antibiotics. So often it is the diagnosis that has failed. And who makes the diagnosis? The doctor responsible for making a diagnosis. And I think let's be very sure that antibiotics rarely fail. And I'll give you the examples of how and what way we should proceed to uh, really go about not blaming the antibiotic, but first blaming yourself, and well, occasionally even the host fails. So diagnosis may be right, the treatment may be right, the doctor is right, but the host fails. After all, when a teacher teaches 50 students, one of them comes first, another one fails consistently. And how can you blame the teacher, nor give a credit to the teacher? because somebody came first. And I think that's the host. So all that we do is, we, we probably just give an antibiotic and hope that the host behaves well, but it's more often we don't behave well, the host occasionally doesn't behave well. <clears throat> this is the way the antibiotics are perceived to be failing. For example, antibiotics fail when there is no infection, naturally. <laughs> there is no doubt whatsoever. And I will elude on every kind of a live case scenarios where the antibiotics